Let's go over the skills you'll be learning as a diver. You'll practice many or all of these during your first confined water dive. The previews you see here show you the basics that apply to most equipment and divers. But there are many ways to accomplish most skills, so your instructor may show you a different method as appropriate for you and your gear. The first skill is setting up your kit. Start by inspecting everything for wear or damage. If you have a new BCD, wet it or at least the cylinder band. This helps it stay adjusted. Slide the BCD onto the cylinder with the valve opening facing the BCD to about this height. You can adjust it later to suit your preference. Tighten and then lock the cylinder band. These vary, so get your instructor to help if necessary. Lift everything by the BCD and make sure the cylinder doesn't slip or move. If it does, tighten the band. Remove the first stage dust cap and the cylinder valve cap if it has one. Make sure there's an O-ring and that it's not damaged. With the yoke system, it's part of the valve opening. With DIN, check here on the regulator. You can't dive without this O-ring. If it's missing or appears damaged, your instructor will show you how to replace it. With your BCD facing away from you, fit the first stage to the valve so that the primary second stage, the one you breathe from, goes to the right and the low pressure inflator hose to the BCD goes to the left. Secure the first stage just finger tight. Cylinder pressure will keep everything secure after you open the valve. Connect the low pressure hose to the BCD inflator, like this. Holding the SPG away from you, slowly open the cylinder valve all the way until it stops. Check to be sure you have a full cylinder or at least enough air for the dive. Press the purge button like this. Airflow should stop when you let go. Exhale into the mouthpiece. Exhalation should be easy. Then, take a few breaths. Breathing should be easy and smooth. If your regulator free flows or continues to release air after you stop breathing, or seems to have some other problem, notify your instructor. Next, Test your BCD inflator like this. Secure your SPG and alternate air source so neither will protrude or dangle underwater. Your SPG usually comes under your left arm and an alternate second stage under your right. Attach your alternate with a quick release so that it's in this triangle area when you're wearing your gear. This keeps it out of the way, yet visible and quickly accessible if it's needed. Check that you've reconnected shoulder release buckles and loosen the waist strap. If you won't be diving for a while, say an hour or more, close the valve and depressurize the regulator by pressing the purge button. This saves your air if there's a leak you didn't notice. Depressurizing also reduces the chance of you accidentally getting into the water with the valve closed. Loosen any straps you can tighten after you put your rig on so it's easier to get into. Secure your kit so it can't fall or lay it down. On your first confined water dive, you may gear up in shallow water, but often you kit up seated out of the water like this or standing like this. Let's go over the steps. Before getting into your kit or exposure suit, get everything else ready. Defog your mask, then adjust it your fins, and snorkel as necessary. Your scuba kit should be fully assembled and ready to go, like you just learned. To avoid overheating when it's hot, put on your exposure suit last, just before getting into your scuba kit. Wetsuits fit snugly and take some effort. The order depends on the type. With this common style, start with the bottoms, followed by the boots, hood if you're wearing one, and jacket. Your instructor will show you the right order for your suit. Dry suits are single pieces and differ in how you put them on. If you're using one in this course, your instructor will show you how to get into yours. You can put on wrist-mounted instruments now, though some divers wait until they're in their scuba kits. 
If you're using a weight belt, that goes on next. Wear it so it has the standardized right hand release. If your BCD has a crotch strap, which is not common in recreational diving, your weight belt goes on after you have your scuba kit on. This is necessary so the crotch strap doesn't trap the belt and make it hard to drop in an emergency. If possible, it's best to get into your kit seated. But sometimes buddies have to hold their rigs for each other. Dive gear is moderately heavy, so use proper lifting whenever you move it. This means bend at the knees and lift by standing. Keep your back straight with its normal curve, like this. Raise your upper chest and stick out your buttocks slightly to keep your back in the right position. Exhale as you lift. Never bend your back to lift scuba gear, or anything else that's heavy for that matter. If you have to hold your buddy's kit, support it with your strong arm and hand on the cylinder bottom and the other balancing it like this. The stronger diver usually kits up first because the diver will be wearing and holding gear at the same time. If your physical characteristics make lifting, standing, and or walking in scuba equipment unreasonable and or unsafe, don't do it. Ask for help as necessary, and there are plenty of alternative methods for getting into your kit. While seated or with a buddy holding your kit, Slip into your BCD and tighten the straps with the weight off your shoulders. Check for trapped hoses. Then, secure all the releases and buckles. Check the cylinder height by tilting your head. If it touches the first stage, readjust the cylinder lower. When your buddy or buddies are ready, you perform a pre-dive safety check and confirm gear operation, location, and connection for each other. You'll learn the details to this in Section 2. Put your mask on by placing it against your face for a good seal, and then pulling the strap back. Develop good habits by always having your mask on in the water, even at the surface. This protects your eyes from unexpected splashes and waves, and lets you see underwater to check your buddy's gear, for instance, if you have to deal with a sudden problem. It also keeps the defog from washing out. Put on your gloves, then your fins go on last, just before entering the water. Buddies help steady each other, donning fins one at a time. Don't forget to wet full foot fins so you can put them on easier. Avoid walking with fins on as much as possible. Put them on as close to the water as you can. If you must walk while wearing them, be cautious and walk backwards so you don't trip over the blade. Sometimes you put your fins on after you enter the water, like when training in a pool. At this point, you're ready to get in using one of several possible entry techniques you'll learn during the course. You constantly use your BCD to control your buoyancy. Before entering, partially inflate it so you will float, say about one third. Inflate using short bursts, like this. You can also inflate it orally, which you'll practice. To deflate your BCD in the water, breathe from your regulator and raise and depress the exhaust button like this. Air will vent from the BCD and you'll descend. During the course, you practice using your BCD until you can stay neutrally buoyant, like being weightless, whenever you want. Release and add air in small amounts so you avoid accidental rapid descents and ascents. For the first dive, you'll use your BCD primarily at the surface. Make a habit of floating positively buoyant with your mask on, breathing from your snorkel or regulator. Inflate your BCD before entering the water, and inflate it first thing when you come up from a dive. If you have a problem at the surface, immediately make yourself buoyant, inflate your BCD. Later, you'll also learn to drop your weight so you're buoyant. When everything's set, your instructor will have you go underwater using scuba. Your first breaths underwater are exhilarating. Breathing underwater is one of the unique experiences that makes diving special. 
Enjoy the moment. Breathe slowly, deeply, and don't hold your breath. Chances are, you'll never forget your first breath underwater. You can't talk using standard recreational scuba gear, so you and your buddies use hand signals. Here are some widely accepted signals, but you may learn some regional ones as well as make some up with your buddies for the circumstances. Okay or okay. Stop. Go up or end the dive. Something's wrong. Which way? Boat. Ears not clearing. Come here. Watch me. Get with your buddy. Hold hands. You lead, I'll follow. Down or descend. Low on air. Out of air. Share air. Slow down or calm down. Breathe. How much air do you have? Danger or hazard. Turn the dive or head back. I'm cold. At the surface, you use large signals that are more visible from a boat or shore. This means OK or OK. If you can only use one hand, it's like this. This means distress or help me. Your instructor may show you additional signals that apply to training. You find that you understand signals in context with what's happening. See if you can figure out what these divers are saying. You should have recognized that the trailing diver was having trouble keeping up. He signaled stop and something is wrong. The buddy replied to stop, breathe and slow down. That is, take it easy and to catch his breath. The diver signaled let me rest a little. A little is not an official signal, but you can tell what he meant. This is normal diver communication. When your regulator leaves your mouth, it fills with water, so you'll learn two ways to clear it and resume breathing. The first is the exhalation method. If you have a breath in your lungs, replace the mouthpiece and blow into it. This pushes the water out. Your head needs to be relatively upright so the exhaust valves are in the lowest position. And of course, you must exhale before you inhale. Use the purge method if you don't have much air to exhale. Replace the second stage, stick your tongue against the mouthpiece to block it, and push the purge button for a moment, like this. This pushes out the water. Blocking the mouthpiece helps keep water from spraying in and making you cough. With either method, because you should never hold your breath, remember to blow a steady stream of small bubbles when the regulator is out of your mouth. It helps to make a continuous ah sound so you keep your airway open. After clearing, inhale your first breath gently and cautiously in case there's residual water. If you release your second stage, depending upon your position, it may drop in front of you or it may end up behind your shoulder out of sight. To recover with the arm sweep method in a relatively upright position like this, Lower your right shoulder. Extend your right arm backward along your cylinder, 
Then sweep outward like this to locate the hose. Follow the hose to the second stage, replace and clear it. With the reach method, reach back to the first stage, find where the hose attaches and follow it out like this. It sometimes helps to lift the cylinder up and to the right with your left hand. With either method, blow bubbles when the regulator is not in your mouth. When swimming, a dropped regulator usually hangs in front of you where it's easy to find. But if you ever have difficulty relocating your second stage, don't waste time trying to find it. Just switch to your alternate air source and then get your buddy to help. It's normal for some water to trickle into your mask, but it's easy to get rid of it. Hold the top of your mask, then while exhaling slowly and steadily through your nose, look upward. Your breath forces the water out the bottom edge of your mask. Start exhaling before you look up so you don't get a little water in your nose. Some masks have a purge valve for clearing. If yours does, hold the mask firmly against your face and look down while exhaling. The water goes out the valve. By the way, if you normally wear contact lenses but can see well enough without them, you may want to have them out during your training dives. But if you need them, tell your instructor and keep your eyes closed so you don't lose them when learning to clear your mask. Use your SPG to manage your air supply at all times. With good air monitoring and management habits, you avoid running out of air, so they're obviously important habits to develop. With a full cylinder, your SPG reads close to the cylinder working pressure. Pay attention to how fast you use your air. You'll notice you use it faster as you exert more and when you dive deeper. With experience, you get a feel for how much air you use. Also with experience, you'll use less air as you relax, control your buoyancy better, and move more efficiently. Note the caution zone, which indicates when you have 50 bar or 500 PSI left. If your SPG is part of your computer, the display may blink or have some other alert. This is your reserve pressure. You plan and execute dives so you have at least this remaining after you're out of the water. During training, alert your instructor when you're getting close to 50 bar or 500 PSI. Your instructor may ask for alerts at other pressures. During the course, you'll learn to turn the dive, that is, head back to the boat or shore, based on your remaining air supply. You learned about equalization earlier. Recall that you need to equalize as you descend to avoid squeezes. Equalize gently and often, every meter or few feet. Equalize your mask by blowing into it from your nose. Descend slowly and be patient. Do not use long, forceful equalization, which can damage your ears and cause hearing loss. If you have difficulty equalizing, stop your descent, signal your buddy and your instructor, ascend a bit and try again. After equalizing, descend more slowly and equalize more often. Never continue descending if you can't equalize. The most popular dive kick is the flutter kick. To do this without wasted effort, starting neutrally buoyant, horizontal and level, kick from the hip with your arms at your side or against your body, like this. Your knee doesn't bend much, and it's a slow, long kick. Stay well above the bottom so you don't damage fragile organisms. You may learn other kicks depending upon your preferences or to meet specific needs. This is the frog kick. Many experienced divers use it most of the time instead of the flutter kick. With proper air management, an air supply emergency should be highly unlikely. But as a diver, you'll know how to manage the problem should it occur. Were you to find yourself out of air, if possible, you would use an alternate air source, most commonly provided by your buddy. Signal out of air and share air. Your buddy responds by providing her alternate second stage, 
though you can secure it yourself if she doesn't. If your buddy uses an alternate inflator regulator, she switches to it and provides you the primary from her mouth. Either way, secure the alternate, clear it, and begin breathing. Grip each other's right forearms like this. This keeps you together and leaves your left hand free to deflate your BCD and control your buoyancy as you ascend. Take just a moment to get settled if you need to. Then ascend at a safe rate to the surface. You'll learn to ascend at a safe rate with your buddy. Signal up to your buddy. Start your ascend by swimming upward. You should not need to put air in your BCD. As you come up, look up, reach up and come up slowly, like this, staying with your buddy and checking overhead regularly. Breathe normally and don't hold your breath. Ascend slowly. Your computer may warn you if you go too fast. Remember what you learned about expanding air? As you come up, the air in your BCD expands, so you have to vent some to keep from becoming too buoyant. Release small, regular bursts like this. During your first confined water dive, your instructor may do this for you. When you reach the surface, keep breathing from your regulator while you inflate your BCD. Once you're floating comfortably, you can switch to your snorkel. Again, make a habit of keeping your mask on and either your snorkel or regulator in your mouth while at the surface.